Hello, everyone. This is Ron Bush with Ron Bush Consulting, and you're listening to the Information Playground. Thank you for being with us today. We are uh, coming to you in a variety of ways. First off, my, uh, my favorite is WVLP. That's a, a local radio station in Valparaiso, Indiana. If you're there, it's 103.1 FM, or you can stream us from anywhere on the planet at WVLP.org. And I encourage you to check out their website. They do a great work in the community. They're a great community radio station. And if you'd like to be involved, that's the place to do it. Uh, also, if you'd like to underwrite the information playground, uh, that's also the place to do it. Uh, you can uh, send an email to uh, Greg Kovich, really nice guy, station manager at info at wvlp.org. And we're broadcast Monday mornings from 8 to 9 and uh, Friday afternoons from 1 to 2 there. So you can also catch us on podcasting platforms, uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, just about any of them. Or you can find us on YouTube and uh, the channel for that is The Information Playground. There's a lot of similar names, so be sure to use all three words, The Information Playground. I'm Ron Bush. I own Ron Bush Consulting, and we are a cybersecurity consultancy. Uh, you can find us at ronbushconsulting.com. Check out my book on Amazon. It's called Staying Safe in a Very Dangerous World. Think before you click. That's available on Amazon. And uh, if you have uh, questions or thoughts, email me, ron at ronbushconsulting.com. Now on to my very special guest today. Uh, they're both good friends. Uh, they both work at Ivy Tech, and I will let each one tell you about themselves. Atso, uh, welcome, you, and uh, please tell the viewers and listeners about you. Thank you, Ron. Uh, thank you for uh, having us. Uh, it's, it's Again, it's uh, really nice uh, to see you, although through the technology. Uh, thank you for having us. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Atso Sikowski, serving chancellor for Ivy Tech Community College, Valparaiso Campus, Michigan City, and Laporte site. Welcome. Welcome. That's great. Been a good friend for years. And if you're anywhere in Porter County or Laporte County, uh, Ivy Tech definitely has a, a wide range of courses. Many of them are free. I suppose we'll get into some of that. Um, Rami, another good friend. And in the cybersecurity industry, Rami, would you tell folks a little bit about yourself? Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you, uh, Ron, for hosting us here. It's, it's, it's an honor to be in your show. Uh, my name is Rami, Professor Rami. I'm actually the Cybersecurity Program Chair for Ivy Tech Valparaiso, and we have a lot of great news to share with you. Yeah. We're looking forward to getting to that, so I'm grateful that you both are on. Let's get right to it. How has Ivy Tech adapted to the needs of students and employees these fall, this fall? You guys always do such a great job. Uh, thank you, uh, Ron, for asking a great question. Uh, like uh, many institutions, uh, especially uh, educational institutions, uh, early in the spring semester uh, this year, when we were, uh, due to pandemic, uh, forced to close the building, and uh, we were forced to continue delivering the education. Uh, so the classes, what we offered face-to-face, -face, uh, we converted uh, virtually. And uh, thanks to the, the, the talented uh, faculty and staff members uh, helping, so students were not, uh, we did not cancel classes, but we continued uh, with those classes. In a similar way, uh, this fall, uh, we are now open for public. Uh, the campus and the sites are open. Uh, we are here, but of course, uh, we are maintaining the CDC guidelines uh, uh, facial, uh, face, uh, wearing face masks as well as social distancing. And of course, uh, we are flexible. Uh, I will mention later on uh, the different uh, types of classes uh, the way we are offering for our students. Actually, I'm, I'm curious, what portion of classes are personal or in-person versus online? Excellent. So as I mentioned uh, earlier this spring, uh, we were scheduled uh, to deliver these classes under normal conditions, but that normal condition overnight changed and we were forced uh, to uh, transfer uh, everything either online or virtual. So knowing with uh, uh, what might be happening this coming fall, uh, we are hoping for the best, but preparing ourselves for the worst. So what that means, 
uh, uh, probably about 20% of our course offering it's on face-to-face -face, and predominantly those are the classes in the healthcare and technology uh, area where students really they need to have that hands-on uh, but the, the other 80 plus percent of the classes either they are uh, blended uh, which is uh, uh, mixed between the face-to-face -face and online or virtual then we have virtual and online and then obviously we have the brand new uh, type of delivery we called learn anywhere mm -hmm. so i wanted just to describe what's the difference between the two uh, major uh, uh, delivery which is one uh, we call it virtual or synchronous which means uh, the class is being scheduled at certain date certain time and faculty is available online so via zoom or technology we uh, faculty teaches the, the subject and uh, students are on the other side, either they're at home, office or other places. And that's how they're meeting. So they're not coming on campus, but it is scheduled time. And that's why we call that synchronous or uh, virtual versus online that it's 100% uh, free, which means there is no assigned time, although all the assignments must be completed within one week and the faculty provides the instructions when is the deadline for those assignments either homework or exercises or even tasks to be completed <laughs> but the last point what i wanted to make it's about learning anywhere what that means we have equipped uh, several classrooms where faculty is being assigned to teach the class in these classrooms and we equip this with the AV equipment. So students are welcome to come in the classroom. So they are sitting there and they are listening to the, the professor, same as face-to-face -face as under normal conditions. If something happened to a student, that means it's prevented to come to the campus, he cannot, he or she needs to be at home. That means they can log in and they can watch via Zoom and the faculty teaches and through this technology, they receive that. At the same time, we do the recording. Those who they cannot either come to the campus nor they can uh, uh, log in and be present at that time, they can listen to the lecture later on. So that's why we really want it to be as flexible as can be so to meet the needs for our students. Well, wow, I applaud your flexibility. It sounds like you've uh, tried to cover all bases. How, how do, you, do you see this continuing after hopefully the end of COVID-19 or the, the vaccine is, is uh, invented or whatever? Hopefully there'll be an end to this stuff. How do you see it continuing? Uh, Ron, we are all uh, conscious that, uh, uh, yes, uh, COVID, um, we were forced to learn new technology and different ways of delivery. Um, uh, we are hoping in, uh, to, to overcome this pandemic, but beyond that, uh, there might be some changes and more flexibility for students and faculty and staff uh, to be more efficient. Uh, some classes, what um, before they might, we never thought that it might be uh, available to be delivered online. Uh, there might be some chances for those classes to be delivered uh, because, again, uh, when we uh, learn uh, the technology, get a little bit more comfortable, confident what we do, and then students at the same time, they're on board and they feel comfortable uh, when we see the quality of the instructions and if we're going to be able to eliminate either the travel time or whatever the case might be and be more, more effective absolutely will continue to do uh, those kind of things. However, there are other classes and you and I, we talked before where definitely our students, they need to have that hands-on experience and they need to come to our labs and, and uh, use the state-of-the-art equipment. Of course, under instructions of our the most uh, uh, educated and certified instructors and provide uh, those skills. You know, I really do applaud all the adjustments you've made. That's one thing that that I think humanity or people are good at. We've, we've had to learn to adjust to many things many times, 
And uh, this is not going to be the last time we'll have a major adjustment. So uh, now let's talk about adjusting on something else. We're recording this on September 11th, which is a, a, a day that will, to use Roosevelt's, President Roosevelt's words about World War II and the attack on Japan, a day that will live in infamy. It's a day I think we'll always remember. But you didn't start classes today. You started them back in August. What do people do if they've missed that start date? Um, Ron, we, we are known, uh, Ivy Tech is known uh, to be innovative and to be adaptable to changes. So we have developed, uh, we call it eight week sections. That means uh, uh, from the traditional 16 week classes, uh, the regular semester, which we continuing to deliver some of those, uh, we transfer into two eight-week sections within the semester. So for example, we did start this, sem this semester late December, but the first eight weeks, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, four or five more weeks, we will end with those uh, classes. But October 26th, we are starting with the second eight weeks. So this way students have ability if they miss the deadline and register for the classes for the standard uh, uh, semester per se for the fall semester they have opportunity to register for the second eight weeks question is are they going to miss anything absolutely not the the, the thing is the way we reorganize is we are offering these classes so for example if the class is being scheduled for 16 weeks, and if it's uh, 48 contact hours, per se, uh, you have three contact hours per week. Now they need to meet twice per week to meet the same amount. So there is no deficiencies per class in terms of delivery the objectives and the uh, amount of work needs to be done to meet the criteria to, keep, to pass that class. So again, those who they have missed uh, August uh, deadline to enroll for fall semester, absolutely they have opportunity to enroll uh, for uh, October 26th start date. Well, that's great. I applaud, again, the flexibility and the adjustments. I know that it's uh, popular now in education to <coughs> finish the degree early. I, they used to joke about how, how kids could sometimes squeeze four-year degree into uh, six years. Uh, you know, joking that it took a lot longer than it should have, of course. And now everything just moves that much faster. People don't want a two-year degree to last two years. They want to get it done early and they, they want to get in and get out because, uh, well, we just move that much faster now. Exactly. Is, that, uh, is that why you've, uh, you've changed? Uh, there, that is true, exactly what uh, you just mentioned, but also... Uh, there is statistics out there, and we were part of that. Uh, when we analyze uh, the, uh, the delivery of these classes, uh, and uh, this is not only for Ivy Tech, but in general for the uh, higher education institutions, uh, it's being known that uh, when the students, they get excited, faculty is excited right from the beginning, but that excitement by the week 10 is declining. And... Uh, the new uh, kind of shortening in the time-wise and faculty and students engagement says to the, the highest level, by the end of eight weeks, they successfully complete that coursework. So this way, uh, not only the engagement stays there, but uh, the focus on last number of uh, classes, it's much better. So students, instead of being registered for four or five classes at the same time, and they're going for, for 16 weeks, now with the mix of eight weeks, they, can, they are able to focus probably on two classes the first eight weeks, two classes in the second eight weeks, and probably one class for the, the, the duration of 16 weeks. And on the other side, for the student point of view, as you know, many of our students, they're working. They have jobs, and when we are offering these classes, it's much more doable and flexible for our students to go and talk to their supervisors at work and say, 
can we adjust my schedule, work schedule, so I can complete this course, and it's going to be only eight weeks. It's much better than if you go, if the student go and ask for 16 weeks, which is right. four months. Oh, that's excellent, excellent. So let's, uh, let me switch gears a little bit. Let's talk about cybersecurity. Why is it important to offer this credential in Valparaiso? I would like to, Rami, to respond on that one. Hello, everybody. Absolutely. Can you hear me? Making yes. sure Zoom is good. Okay. Well, cybersecurity, it is a very, uh, it's a very interesting field because if you, whatever your major is, if you're a doctor, if you are an engineer, if you're a lawyer, whatever your profession is, you always continuously in contact with cybersecurity because everything we do nowadays uses some type of computing device and and because of our planet Earth is connected right now, thanks to the packet switching technology, we switch from circuit switching. Remember the old phone system? Mm -hmm. Nowadays, everybody 24 seven, right now I have in my room Alexa that I can actually say what is the weather. So even IoT devices connect to the internet. While cybersecurity, it's, it's actually, it's a number one concern for actually our infrastructure. Everybody use cybersecurity. If you um, 10 years old, or if you have professionals, everybody actually have to do with cybersecurity. Uh, so we offer at Ivy Tech multiple tracks. We have, um, we have a technical certificate. We have an associate of science. We also have associate of applied science and cybersecurity. So I hope I answered your question there, Ron. Oh, definitely. Tell me, uh, tell me about the cybersecurity program on your campus there in Valpo and talk about some of the accomplishments. Well, at Valbrazo campus, we're very proud of our student. Our student really uh, make all the work and uh, we actually establish number one, as a student in Ivy Tech in Valbrazo campus, you could join the three cyber club. We have the cyber gladiator, which is the main team. We have about, about almost about 30 to 40 students who actively participate in cyber competition. We do state, national, and we also do international cyber competition. Uh, we win a lot of, uh, award and uh, just recently at, I, at Ivy Tech in June 8 to 12, we hosted the USCC, United States Cyber Challenge. Uh, we have about uh, 42 students attended from 17 different states and Ivy Tech sponsored that event along with the uh, USCC and it was a very great success. We invited students virtually to the camp and we have a winner and one of the winners was an Ivy Tech student. So we're very proud of it. The winner will proceed to go to the Super Bowl in October to Washington DC to compete on a national levels. We're very proud of this. So this is one accomplishment. We have other accomplishments. We also have, uh, we did participate in the Collegiate Cyber Defense Competition, CCDC. We also, on spring and fall, we participate in the National Cyber League, which is an online cyber competition for the whole nation. We also came in uh, on the top 5%. And also we compete in the Department of Energy DOE Cyber Force Competition we went last year to the Oregon National Lab in Illinois. We actually competed face-to-face. -face. I think this year will be all virtual because of COVID-19, of course. Our students and Ivy Tech are very passionate. COVID-19 did not actually prevent us from hosting a national, actually, a regional, I should say, boot camps. Uh, we're very active. We have a three cyber club, the Cyber Gladiator, which is the elite group of students who compete in this competition. And we meet every week, anywhere between at least twice a week for four hours, training the student and we also train for cyber uh, certification. We also have a dedicated a club uh, for our female in cybersecurity called Women in Cybersecurity. We are the first chapters in state of Indiana established WISE Women in Cybersecurity and our student actually got a scholarship to go to Denver, Colorado this year, but because of COVID-19 it went virtual. So we're very proud of our uh, female in cybersecurity at Ivy Tech Valparaiso. Also have another club called Computer Master where we do Cisco and programming and server administration. So we're very active in Ivy Tech, Valbraza. We have a lot of great news to share with you. We, we cannot even you know, keep track of the different activity. We have so many great news we do every time our student gets scholarship. Uh, one of my students right now, she's gonna be attending a conference. She's gonna be a speaker on a major conference. And uh, we have a lot of great news to share with you in Ivy Techs. Gosh, that is, uh, that's exciting. Um, so let's talk about a, a career in cybersecurity. You've got students that are, sounds to me like they're, they're on their way to a, to a career in cybersecurity. What does that look like? 
And what skills does a student need to succeed in it? Right. So you could be a criminal justice student and you can dual major cybersecurity. You could be a history major. You can dual uh, major in cybersecurity. You could be a nurse. You could dual major in cybersecurity. So it's really cybersecurity, it's, it's a concern for any type of industry, any type of profession. Uh, well, what kind of skills you want? Really have to have that interest of finding the truth, so trying to see what happened. How can somebody break into my credit card? How can somebody was able to hack into my church Wi-Fi? How did somebody was able to get in, into the, the credit card company? If you have that talent, if you have that kind of interest that you need to know what happened, then you're good for cybersecurity. A lot of people misunderstood cybersecurity. They say, oh, I have to know calculus. I have to be super math. Not really. Cybersecurity, it's, it's funny because we invited the director of cybersecurity, State of Indiana, her name is Shatrice Mosley, to our campus for the Cybersecurity Awareness Month last year. And she is the director of the whole state in cybersecurity, but her background in communication. So, you know, cybersecurity is really open to everybody. You know, cybersecurity jobs, we have different jobs. We have entry level jobs, we have mid level jobs, and we have advanced level jobs. When you attend Ivy Tech, we have a group of cybersecurity classes that you can take that prepare you to build the foundation. We have Security Plus certification, we have Cyber Ops, Cisco Cyber Ops certification, and we also have Ethical Hacking certification. These three foundations help you to become a landed job as an entry job position in cybersecurity, such as a cybersecurity specialist technician, or it could be a uh, cyber crime analyst or investigator, someone who works in forensic. You can also do incident analyst responders, or you can do an IT auditor. This is all falls under the entry position for cybersecurity. And these positions get paid really a lot of money. I mean, don't be, believe it or not, one of my students, Ivy Tag Balbo, I'm not gonna mention his name to keep his privacy. He just did a, a consulting job in June. He made over decent amount of money. He made really great money, almost six figures, uh, you, know, you know, for the month of June. And I was surprised he came and shared this news for me. He told me, Professor, look what I got. and you, you know, all what you have to do in cybersecurity, you have to be passionate about finding the truth. Help your community, help your school, help your place of worship. That's the reason cybersecurity really it's, is a, an amazing field for everybody. Uh, th th this is for an entry job position. Uh, we also have other positions when it comes into mid-level job, like when you become cybersecurity analyst, work for a company like the FBI, or even work for an insurance company. You can also work as a security cybersecurity consultant, or you could be a penetration and vulnerability tester. This is all mid-level jobs. The last category in cybersecurity as jobs, you could be a cybersecurity manager or administrator, or you could be an engineer, or you could be an architect. This is basically the different position in cybersecurity. Wow, that's an excellent answer and, uh, and a great rundown. I'm curious, you know, we, we all have talked about the uh, the uh, number of jobs that are going wanting in cybersecurity, the number that uh, that I saw in print as late as last year was three and a half million positions available that were going wanting because there weren't people to fill them. I don't know if the pandemics affected that. Do you know if there's any, uh, any new data on that? I, I know cyber crime has gone through the roof. So I would expect, uh, I would expect there to be as, at least as many positions available, but I don't know that. It's interesting what you mentioned this. It's the only profession that actually did not suffer when it comes into COVID-19 is IT and specifically cybersecurity. I'm looking right now at, the, uh, at a website. It's called uh, cyberseek.org, heatmap.html. If you look it up, cyberseek.org slash heatmap.html, we noticed that there is more in demand for cybersecurity professional because especially right now, we, we're meeting over this meeting over Zoom and... Uh, a lot of those cyber actors, we call them different type of cyber actors could be uh, different criminals. They, this is their, their heaven because this is a time where all uh, high school kids and I should say student and everybody else right now going online. And this is a perfect environment that somebody can get into your home network and taking advantage of this connectivity. So, so this is really, it's actually in demand. And, and, and I think right now I see more students getting at Ivy Tech certification, they're coming to me and say, Professor, how am I going to be able to ready to get land and job? I say, let's, let's go ahead and get your Security Plus certification. Let's get your Cyber Ops certification. Let's get your Ethical Hacking certification. Ivy Tech has a hands-on certification program that actually prepare you for a job, into job in the field. Of course, you have to have the passion. You have to have the dedication. Uh, we at Ivy Tech, we have an amazing program. And 
we actually also in Ivy Tech were Center for Academic Excellence. We certified by the NSA and DHS, and we designated Center of Academic Excellence in Cyber Defense until 2022. So the curriculum that we actually have in Ivy Tech, it's actually confirmed and actually certified by the government agency that meet their standards. So coming to Ivy Tech, it's an amazing. I have students who have a bachelor's and master's degree came in back to me and said, I cannot find a job in my field. I'm thinking to go for cybersecurity and end up actually attending Ivy Tech. And some of them right now work for really um, you know, famous company right now. I can mention some names. You know, I have students who actually land a job for Raytheon. I have Lucky Martin. I have students who actually went to work with the Department of Homeland Security. We also have a scholarship between Ivy Tech and our other neighboring university. And that scholarship, it's paid by the government where students can transfer from Ivy Tech and then they can go to that uh, Four East University and they could take advantage of that scholarship. So we have a lot of good program. Please look into cybersecurity. We have an amazing story over there for you. We have a lot of great news. I cannot stop talking about cybersecurity. <laughs> well, that's great. Um, I want to take a, a short break, uh, do a little identification. I'm going to ask Atso, both you and Rami, to give out your probably email so that people can contact you. They have questions. Um, so I'm Ron Bush. I own Ron Bush Consulting, and we are a cybersecurity consultancy, which uh, probably explains the, the friendship and the relationship of, uh, <laughs> there you go, Rami, uh, that Rami and I share, although Atso and I have known each other longer and, and also share a great friendship. Um, we are programming. Um, Give, bringing you this program through WVLP. Uh, WVLP is a radio station that's local in Valparaiso, Indiana, and it's a great community station. It's 103.1 FM or go to the website wvlp.org. If you have questions or thoughts, email me, ron at ronbushconsulting.com or uh, the station manager, who's uh, Greg Kovich, very nice man, info at wvlp.org. Uh, Atso, how can folks get a hold of you if they've got questions with Ivy Tech? A. Sikoski, A S I K O S K I at ivytech.edu. Excellent. And Rami, I saw yours flash on the screen. Um, so uh, I have my email, my first initial R as in Romeo, S as in Sylvia, A as in Alpha, L as in Light, A as in Alpha, H as in Henry. I is in Illinois, E is in Edward, H is in Henry at ivytech.edu. We also have a dedicated website for Ivy Tech Valbrazo, which is uh, www.ivytech.edu slash Valbrazo. We have all the program in Ivy Tech. We have our contact <coughs> information, including my contact information there myself and Professor Ben Morado. He is the IT department chair. Great, great. Now, we've talked about all these great jobs and opportunities in, uh, in cybersecurity. I know that Ivy Tech offers some classes that are honestly free to the student. What type of funding options are available for students besides um, student aid or financial aid? Another excellent question, Ron. Um, besides, uh, we are offering uh, the best classes. Uh, and we have uh, all the variety of programs and classes offerings. Um, uh, state-of-the-art equipment, the most knowledgeable faculty and staff, uh, but also we are the most affordable institution in the state of Indiana. Uh, besides that, uh, we are so conscious that uh, we can help our students. There could be scholarships available and other means, but also I wanted to mention the next level jobs or workforce ready grant, what is available through state of the uh, state of Indiana. And uh, probably many of the listeners, they already know, but for those who don't, don't uh, this uh, initiative is uh, part of the uh, Governor Holcomb's agenda to keep up the momentum with good economy uh, and provide a skilled workforce so we can support that good economy in the state of Indiana. And it's being predicted that uh, uh, with over, over 2 million of our users, they need to upskill uh, their skills and, and uh, to meet the, the uh, workforce needs of 21st century. Uh, so because of that, uh, these funds are available through the governor's office, uh, uh, of course, 
and many of the programs and certification are being available through Ivy Tech. They qualify uh, to support how we call it those uh, high demand, high paying jobs, uh, and they're for a group within the five sectors. Anything from advanced manufacturing, uh, building construction, health and life sciences, IT business serv services, and of course, uh, transportation and uh, logistics. So that was uh, pre-pandemic uh, or pre-COVID, uh, what was available now, still that is available uh, for, and that was available for high school students uh, who they graduate, but they don't have formal uh, post-secondary education. Now with the uh, funds available through the federal funds, uh, rapid recovery, uh, now that's being extended. And now uh, their uh, availability for students who they have even some post-secondary uh, education, they can come and then uh, they can upscale. But that is coming pretty soon to the end. It's a December 31st. So we encourage our listeners to reach out to us and, and to see what we can do and how we're going to help them. So please uh, 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 browse on uh, ivytech.edu slash forward next level jobs and you can get that information or uh, simply go to the nextleveljobs.org website and you're going to get more detailed information about this. Great. Now you mentioned some courses are, are coming up in October. How does a student get started for those? Absolutely. So as I mentioned earlier in our discussions, uh, we have the second eight weeks uh, starting on October 26th and uh, uh, actually on September 21st through uh, 25th that week, we call it Express Enrollment Week where we are inviting students to come. Uh, we have a virtual as well as in person. So uh, we can provide all that information in helping the students to be enrolled and register for classes so they can start on October 26th. So those dates are uh, September 21st through 25th. And uh, please, I'm inviting uh, all the listeners to just uh, log in on ivytech.edu slash forward EE day. We call it Express Enrollment Day. But again, the website address is ivypac.edu slash forward double E day. Or please call us at 219-464-8514. And again, the number is 219-464-8514. Excellent, excellent. So for those students that can't make it to campus, uh, but they want to talk live uh, or maybe see someone virtually, is there a way for student services? Are they, are they operating virtually? Can the students talk to them that way? We better provide that services in this kind of environment. Right. Of course we do run. Uh, yes, uh, we, uh, as I mentioned, uh, we're going to have that uh, uh, virtual option as well. And we're inviting students to go on Ivy Tech dot edu slash forward enrollment center so we're going to get them somebody to start helping them immediately great now i've got some more questions for for rami on the uh on different things that are going on for the the classes or for the the work there at ivy tech but before we go there because i have a feeling we'll fill up the rest of the time with that um, any other new programs in Valparaiso that you'd like to share? Absolutely. Uh, we were able to uh, uh, develop and approve uh, two additional programs at the Valparaiso campus. One is the agriculture program. Uh, we work with the uh, uh, local uh, farmers as well as the co-ops and uh, the other companies that are related to the farming. Uh, so we created the first step as a certificate and uh, we have uh, this brand new certificate for agriculture uh, and in fact we start running the class. Of course the first one is the safety in agriculture field and we are running this class uh, right now as, as we speak but uh, also we develop uh, the an approved medical assisting program, a uh, new program for the Valparaiso campus. In fact, uh, while we were closed, uh, we were able to work uh, with, uh, through our maintenance department, but uh, uh, with contractors to be able to uh, retrofit one regular classroom into medical assistance lab dedicated 
state of the art, and now we are ready and we are running several sections of, of those for medical assistant, which is, again, those are the high paying jobs, uh, high demand, and, and need every, every time. Great. Now, I remember, I don't know how many tours I've taken of Ivy Tech. Uh, you led most of them. Um, how, I know you've got great uh, facilities for uh, nursing and medical. Um, agriculture, what do you do there? Are those classes, uh, I mean, how do, you, how do you do that on campus? Uh, interestingly enough, uh, and, and thank you for mentioning that because definitely we take a really good pride of our facility and, and uh, our faculty and program chairs for dedicated work and, and, and of course donations, uh, the way we were able to develop these state-of-the-art uh, labs and state-of-the-art uh, equipment so uh, our students can get the best experience. Uh, but in terms of agriculture, uh, we have, uh, for this particular certificate, uh, we have a mix of classes between industrial technology and agriculture, which means uh, as we all know, uh, agriculture is no longer uh, that old agriculture as like in any industry. It's pretty much everything is uh, computerized. It's everything uses GPS and high tech. So uh, these students are uh, going into this program and to earn this certificate, they're not only getting to just uh, these uh, few classes on the agriculture side, but also they're getting to industrial uh, technology classes uh, or side where we have already developed these, uh, uh, these uh, labs. They get the experience there, but when it comes down for the other classes, we are establishing this partnership with the local farmers so they really can, they can have that kind of experience. Great, great. Well, I, I remember you had quite an offering before when I, it's been a couple of years since I've been on campus, but... Um, well, actually, it hasn't been Absolutely. probably. Been we, are, we are very proud. We are very proud. And uh, when we are inviting the community leaders and visitors and uh, providing the tours of the, of the campus, uh, and when they see it, it's, it's not uh, once. It's very common. Uh, uh, very often common says, I could not believe what I'm seeing here at Ivy Tech. Uh, what uh, a, a great facility and jewels right here in, in Porter County and serving uh, Northwest Indiana in general uh, as a two-year institutions, having this kind of facility, it's, it's really been a blessing for us, for all of us. Great, great. Well, Rami, I know that there's some, some big news on the cybersecurity side of things. So can you share with us what some of the, what that is? Yes, absolutely. So uh, we have a lot of great news actually in the cybersecurity because this is a field that not only the uh, 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 private or public sector, everybody want to talk to you. So uh, I, I cannot yet yet announce it officially until we sign the contract, but we really receive a, uh, let's put it this way, a lot of money to actually sponsor cybersecurity education and IV tag and uh, we will announce this on uh, social media once we sign the contract with the correct entity or organization. Uh, this money will be used actually to train in cybersecurity education, provide cybersecurity certification, training, and uh, provide as much resources to these, uh, uh, you know, uh, benefit of this cybersecurity grant. So we cannot talk about it right now until it's officially signed the contract, but this is coming. We will be announcing this in social media as soon as we sign the contract. This is one thing. And Ivy Tech, really, we're very active here. In Ivy Tech, state of Indiana, we have, uh, we sponsor the National Guard in um, Mascot Attack, which is an urban training center down in Columbus. And uh, we here at Valbo Campus, we build a cybersecurity also uh, the academy. We call it the Cybersecurity Academy North. There's a one in Mascot Attack, and there's a one here in Valbo Campus. Our student, actually, is actually the student of Ivy Tech, built that uh, cyber Academy and we spend the whole Christmas, you know, putting the racks, the switches, the routers, the servers, and we build the computer, the computers. We did it all with the help of the students. So when you come to Ivy Tech, you part of the revolution, you part of the change, you part of the positive impact in your community. Our students don't want to actually leave the class. When we used to, when the time before COVID-19, even now I'm teaching in Zoom. My student, we finish up three hours lecture, still on a Zoom, and ask me question. I'm like. 
students want to take a break because they get so excited how somebody can protect their Wi-Fi, how can somebody protect their credit card information. A lot of people say, you know, I do shopping online, how to make sure I protect myself. So cybersecurity uh, education is really, it's, it's, it's a big thing right now. And a lot of uh, students from different backgrounds, a lot of professionals come to me and talk to me, I have a business, I have, my, I have to protect my kids, especially right now, cyberbullying and what takes place you know, in, in cybersecurity. This has become a really critical thing to our everyday, everyday life right now. But give an example, if you use your cell phone, anybody can actually intercept your cell phone communication. It takes about $300, a little computer circuit that you can plug it in and that person can actually tab into your cell phone communication. And when you become a cybersecurity student, you learn about this stuff, it's like, okay, I will never log into my online banking anymore from a public terminals. I want to make sure I only do it from a secure place. This is the age we live in right now. We all have right now, but um, what, what took place in the 80s, we have about only 1,000 computer connected to the internet. In, in the 90s, we went to a mil, 1 million computer connected to the internet. And in, in 2006, we went to 1 billion computer. Now we have over if I look up that uh, statistic online, which is, I really find it here to make sure I'm putting you with the correct information. As Hold on, just, to, just one moment, Rami. All right, we're back. So we're talking about in the 80s, about 1,000 computer connected to the internet. In the 90s, about a million computer. In 2006, we went to 1 billion computer. It's now 2020, and we have about 30, 0.73 billion devices connected in the planet Earth to the network, to the internet. These devices are not secured. Uh, this is the age we live in right now. And by 2025, we're looking at least statistic.gov explain we have about 75 billion devices connected to the internet. You don't have to worry about finding job in cybersecurity. You, you have to only make sure you get qualified and get... That's exactly what we do at ID Tech. We have these courses for you. We teach hands-on. When you walk into my cybersecurity class, we actually show you how you protect your computer, you protect your network, you protect your uh, Alexa, you protect your car. Nowadays, even if you drive your car, cars right now has a connection to the network and somebody can actually what, unlock the vehicles or somebody can actually turn off the engine. This is a really interesting, exciting age. You know, in the, in, in the past, when I used to actually go deposit a check in the bank, I have to physically go to the bank. Nowadays, all I have to do is take a picture of that check. Now, this is make it so convenient to our citizen, but at the same time, it's a sword with double edge become a cybersecurity nightmares because those cyber actors, they actually what? Finding vulnerabilities and weaknesses in your cell phone, in your laptop, in your Alexa, and any of these devices so they can actually get into your uh, personal information. We call it the PII, personal identifiable information. So this is an amazing time for you to actually look in cybersecurity education. We have a lot of great news to share with you. I'm actually kind of touching the, the surface here. I didn't even go with all the great news we have at Ivy Tax. Well, just to stay on the subject you were just on, I mean, think of the changes. You said this is a, a great time, and it is a great time. But you also mentioned that uh, these things come with a double-edged sword. We've got 5G en route, which uh, according to CISA, they expect to have it rolled out cybersecurity infrastructure. Um, they, they expect to have that rolled out in the next two years. Uh, Verizon's very active on it. Uh, depending on who you read, it's 25 times the current download speed, up to 100 times the download speed. CISA says it's 100. Verizon says it's 25. But, um, I mean, along with that, sizes of networks, uh, it's, it's 100 times the size of a network that can join the, the internet, which to the hacker, now increases his ability to move bot, botnets. Uh, the speed allows him to, uh, to hack or to attack things faster, to be in and be out that much faster, to download files that much faster. Um, you know, with, with all the greatness, great rewards, I guess we'll call it, come great risk as well. And so once again, I, I, I can see nothing but a great, uh, a great future for cybersecurity of the people that are choosing that as their career. I'm, uh, I'm excited that Ivy Tech is so active here. Um, I just, uh, I've been, I guess, enamored with Ivy Tech since I think I met Otso and Rotary years ago. Um, so we're, uh, we're coming down to, uh, to the line here. We've got about 10 more minutes. And so I wanna ask both of you, 
for last thoughts, um, things I should have asked you, questions I should have asked, things that you want to be sure that get uh, get said. Uh, Atso, uh, would you go first? And, uh, and yes, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> definitely, we live in unprecedented times. Uh, many challenges out there, and uh, students, including the ones who they are already in the uh, taking classes in the four institutions, and uh, some of them they consider to take a gap year, so-called, uh, because of unknowns, uh, and they have decided to stay home. Uh, and not to go and continue their education, definitely I will encourage them to reconsider that. And while they're at home, uh, we have 18 campuses, the 20 plus sites throughout the state of Indiana. Certainly we have Valparaiso campus, outstanding facility, Michigan City, LaPorte. Please reconsider, join us for the Express Enrollment Week, uh, September 21st 20 through 25th. Uh, at any time, obviously, uh, outside that, but that is the day, uh, those are the dates when we can provide the best uh, information and uh, we, we call it all hands on deck, so to speak, and be able, to, be able to take the classes starting on October 26th. So that way these classes, uh, uh, when they successfully complete it, students can transfer to their home institutions. Uh, we are delivering all these classes, what they are on core transfer library, we call that, which means either English, psychology, math, some business classes, all these classes uh, when it comes down for the general education are transferable to the four year public institution. So minimize those gap uh, years. And then for those uh, unfortunately lost their jobs because of COVID and now uh, uh, we are recouping from uh, this employment. And we all know now from double digits, now we are down to single digits uh, uh, in employment uh, rates. But when employers ca calling back these employees, they're looking for new skills. Right. Uh, employers, they upgraded their technology and uh, these employ employees, they need to possess uh, these new skills. So I invite them uh, also to come reach out to us and upskill uh, uh, their, their uh, skills and being able to meet the, the workforce needs uh, with the, either with the uh, previous employer or new employers. And again, I mentioned workforce ready grant, next level jobs, funds are available, scholarships are available, uh, support is available, uh, many different ways. Obviously we need to go to follow the, the, the processes, but everything is available. Please don't stay at home and don't wait until last minute and then ask the question, oh, I wish I could have done. Right. Do it now, don't wait. We have these uh, classes starting on October 26th. And by the way, for the continuing students and new students, when they're coming to Ivy Tech, registering for the classes for the second eight weeks, they have opportunity to register for classes in the spring semester as well. So again, kind of one-stop shop. Come in and let's do it together so you can advance the, the, the skills and education. Very, very important for all of us. Excellent, so, excellent. Thank you so much for, for having me, Ron. And again, I'm going to just repeat the uh, phone number to call us. It's a 219-464-8514. Or www.ivtech.edu slash forward double E day, which we call it that Express Enrollment Day, EE -E Day. Great, great. Well, thank you for, for being with us, Atso. Uh, Rami, I want to give you the same opportunity. I, I talked a little bit about 5G. We're also in the age of facial recognition, artificial intelligence, deep learning, machine learning. And all of those things are great on one side. All of them have their offset. Uh, if you want to continue that or you want to just end on the things that, uh, that uh, I should have asked you or anything else, last thoughts. Well, I just want to mention one thing that Ivy Tech, we have the free cybersecurity classes. You can take these free classes. Actually, there's two of them. They're non-credit cybersecurity courses that prepare you to future classes 
in cybersecurity and Ivy Tech. One is called Introduction to Cybersecurity, and one is called Cybersecurity Essentials. The website is www.ivytech.edu slash cyber hyphen security. So I should say cyber dash security. This is the website. So ivytech.edu slash cyber dash security. These are the classes available free of a charge. Anybody could actually enroll in them. You can self-enroll yourself. And these classes offered by Cisco Academy. Uh, and, and we actually, in Ivy Tech, we have multiple academy. We have a lot of resource for you. The classes we teach in Ivy Tech, these classes actually design in industry standard that prepare you to actually find a job. When you graduate from Ivy Tech, you present your degree and your certification. And a lot of company right now, they're looking for this certification and hands-on experience. I highly recommend you should look into that website I provided to you. There's a great things you can do. And it doesn't matter if you are actually 17 years old or if you're actually uh, 60 years old. I have students from all different backgrounds. All what I ask you to do is to have actually that passion to know the truth and find out what happened and help your house, help yourself, help your community, uh, help your place of worship, your church, and so on and so forth. This is what really cybersecurity about. This is the age that of technology, and this is the time for you to get into this major. Excellent, excellent. Well, thank you. Thank, thanks to both of you. I'm grateful that, uh, that you were with us today. You're both good friends, and uh, it's always good to see you. Although, Rami, I didn't get to see you. I got to see your name, but, uh, <laughs> but at least I got to see Atso, and I got to hear both of you, so it's a pleasure. You've been listening to the Information Playground. We are a, a, a program that is always talking about technological things, often cybersecurity because of what I do, but all kinds of things that are going on in technology and in the culture. Education is one of the most important. And, uh, and I'm always grateful when I have representatives from that industry with me, especially uh, ones that can, uh, can see the future and, uh, and envision things that, uh, as they should be, as both of you do. So it's a pleasure. Uh, as far as that goes, we're underwritten by Ron Bush Consulting. You can find us at uh, ronbushconsulting.com. Send me an email from there. Uh, you can also uh, find the information playground uh, being played on uh, WVLP. Go to their website, wvlp.org, and you're welcome to underwrite our program or other programs that they have. They're an excellent community radio station. Check out my book, uh, Staying Safe in a Very Dangerous World. Think Before You Click. It's available on Amazon. And with that, check us out on podcast stations, uh, Google Podcast, Apple Podcast, um, and of course, uh, Spotify. And, uh, and don't forget to check us out on YouTube. You can do those on demand or listen to us on WVLP on Monday mornings from 8 to 9 and Friday afternoons from 1 to 2. Thank you all for listening. I hope everyone stays safe and, and uh, we look forward to seeing you back. Ron Bush for the Information Playground.